and we'll pick this class on a survey on world religion. It's already the, our second uh, day of this particular class and we'll continue uh, from where we left on. See this uh, subject of word religion. We have to understand the religion first. So the question we are addressing uh, at this time and through through the, these uh, initial, I mean, the beginning of our lesson is what is a religion? And we are not only we did study the dictionary definition of the uh, the word religion, but we are going to elaborate on the aspects of religion and gonna try to answer the question what is a religion what is it about and we said first religion is a belief system so it has to do with the, all of the, these beliefs about the reality and existence so the word As we try to understand the life or humanity or uh, in technical word, the human context, these are the key words that I'm going to use more often. The reality and existence. Each person, you, are surrounded by the reality or given into a reality. You are born into reality and you did not have a choice. You, you could not choose where to born, when to born, to whom. So that the reality is something that you cannot determine. So sometimes people say as So the question is, why is it a, a destiny? And that, that's another important question in, uh, in religion. Religion is trying to answer the, 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 the reality given, the destiny. Once it's given, you cannot avoid it. You cannot overcome it. Some religion says, you know, you cannot. You have to live with it. But some religion says, no, you, you are going to work against or work over and work with reality. So you can create your own destiny. destiny. So there are two different answers to the same question. So that's what the religion is. And it's a different belief system. And again, going back. So the, there is a reality and you are going to either react, work with, or go against, or respond, or proact to the reality and it becomes your existence. Existence is a way of life. And always you come back to the, the particular belief when you are trying to interact with the reality. So when you're interacting with the reality, you have to have certain principles. And that principle, again, is your belief. So that's what we talked about at the, at the end of the last class. And now we are going to continue on this topic. What is a religion in more detail? And uh, it's pretty similar, religion as a worldview, or religion and a worldview. 
Sometimes your religion is your world view, and your world view is a religion. Sometimes it is the same. For some people, religion is a part of world view, your world view. So there is a big world view, and uh, probably is a major part, but still it is a part of your world view. So that's why I didn't say religion as world view, but religion and world view. Religion as a belief system, it, 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 it does make sense, but religion as a world view, sometimes it does, sometimes it does not. So world view and religion may be separate for some people. And uh, of course it, it could be the, the uh, same for the belief system, but usually it is not that possible to separate religion and belief system because uh, religion provides a belief system and, and even if we ha may have some, some discrepancy, meaning difference, difference between your uh, religion and your belief system, it eventually comes together. But religion and worldview can go way too different. But worldview is pretty similar to belief system, but many times worldview does not require that much commitment or royalty or devotion to that particular view. It's just a view. And that word view can change from time to time, situation to situation. So word view is rather less uh, intense, I would say, intense than a belief system. So the definition, let's look at the, uh, the definition. It says a particular philosophy of life or conception of the world. See, this is different. Uh, when the belief system is, it, it, it is a certain belief. It says philosophy. Philosophy is more of thoughts than your heart. So I always differentiate belief system to the word in that way. A belief is more of your heart. It, it does take your, your royalty, your commitment, and your faith. And uh, a worldview is not so much of faith, but it's philosophy, thoughts, and the concepts of the world. But it is so important. And the worldview and your belief should go together. And if it does not, then uh, there is, a, a, again, that uh, inner conflict. So many of you, this... Uh, inner conflict or psychological issues or are stemmed or it, it is rooted rooted uh, to the problem of belief system and the worldview. When your worldview crashes with uh, your, I mean the, the your wish of uh, or your 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 projection of who are you are going to be, that's how you wish you want to be, but the real world, the reality says, no, you cannot do that. When that happens, there has to be some resolution. And uh, if you do not find that resolution of that conflict, then it's going to bring you uh, some trauma, some difficulties, some uh, serious conflicts that, that continues on. And some Sometimes it's uh, in the level of stress, but it can go beyond that and it became a uh, daily thing. And once it becomes a daily thing, then it may become a certain form of sickness, abnormality. And it, it's going to cause a person to you know, be dysfunctional. So m many of the psychological issues goes beyond the psychology and it goes made into the belief and the worldview. 
Anyway, so definition of worldview says that's the defini written definition a particular philosophy of life or conception of the world. So while a belief system is uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, belief, this is a philosophy level of philosophy and conception, and it is a way to perceive one's reality and existence. So perception and belief uh, of reality and uh, existence, uh, while belief system is a belief, is a perception of reality. And religious beliefs may dominate one's worldview. So again, this religious belief is more of an inner level of a humanity or a human, uh, human uh, component or human essence. It is in there then it produces certain word view which is your more of your thinking your thoughts and then your ideas and your perception and conception of the world so usually a religious belief that dominates or it controls your world view and it should go hand in hand or another way that it should be integrated word view and religion to be integrated or then you will have uh, some uh, difficulties uh, leaving the reality and many people make a choices with their world view which is which is uh, related to one's value so there is a value system and a belief system and worldview. It is pretty similar. It's like a, a, the, the a two sides of a coin or the uh, like a watermelon. Uh, there is a, a hard uh, shell, a watermelon. And then there is an inner uh, pink uh, portion of watermelon. But both, it is, it, Creates a watermelon, and the worldview, values, and the belief system, it it's like a making of a a uh, fruit, a watermelon. It's all is goes together. It should be integrated. So again, the religion usually dominates your worldview. And uh, there are some people who put uh, religion under their worldview. So that, that does happen. And this, uh, this is a kind of example of what the worldview is. It's about your, your time and society, values, economy, knowledge. And in this diagram, it puts a belief under as a, as a part of worldview but i wouldn't do that i would put that belief in the center uh, of a uh, worldview so that's a little different i adopted this from uh, uh, some examples in the internet but this is not how i do it but this is an example of uh, worldview now Religion as an ideology. Ideology is defined as a system of ideas and ideals, especially, especially one which forms the basis of economic or political theory and policy. So ideology basically deals with the issue of political and economy. So for Americans, there, there are uh, two main ideology that kind of rules them. Politically, democracy is America's ideology. America's ideology. Not everyone and not every American believes in democracy, but most, uh, probably 90% plus, uh, 
Americans believe in democracy as their political ideology. When I say believe, I, I don't mean in the sense of the, uh, the belief and belief system, but some does, some does. Uh, but uh, they, I would say they agree or accept or, uh, or the, the, the understand uh, democracy as their political ideology. Then for the economy, uh, Americans, most Americans believe in capitalism. Capitalism. Uh, while, uh, let, let me give a co comparison. Uh, some of you who are listening to this lecture are uh, Chinese, uh, uh, then from mainland China. And uh, most of you were brought uh, to uh, take so sociology, uh, I mean, socialistic uh, idea, ideology as your economic and the political uh, agenda. Or uh, in the past, we had something called commun communism. So commun either, why, either it's com communism or it's, uh, socialistic uh, ideology, it's uh, different from the American uh, ideology. So there are two different ideology about how uh, a nation or group of people see the economy and politics. And even within, within the uh, belief of democracy, we see the, the two different ideologies in America. One is Republican and one is Democratic. So both uh, are loyal fans of democracy, but their ideology is a little different. So these are uh, the examples of democracy, capitalism, communism, socialist. And so there is a certain ideology that you uh, kind of pursue or even believe. So again, the application, what is your ideology? And does that have anything to do with the religion? And uh, <clears throat> many times ideology is not dominated or related to one's religion. Because it deals with, it usually deals with a different agenda. But at the end, your economic issue and political issue is also part of your reality. And there comes a time that you need to make a decision about your economic reality and political reality. And uh, I have to a ask a, a question. Is, is, it, is, is this decision goes along with, or it of course with, or is it appropriate with my belief, my religious belief? So for example, America, always when it comes to the election time, it deals with the uh, issue of abortion. Abortion. Some say it's a killing of human life. Some say it's a choice uh, for, for a mother. It's a woman's choice. It's, it's a uh, femininity issue. It's a more a political than religious. But many evangelical, evangelical Christians, most of uh, most evangelical Christians believe uh, uh, an abortion is is a murder, is a killing of a precious life given by God. While some, usually, is a is a Democrat. Uh, I mean, according to idiom, many Republicans believe is a abortion is uh, the killing of life. While uh, the most democratics believe is is a uh, uh, issue of uh, choice, but 
It's not democratic, democratic or republican issue. It's, it's a religious uh, belief issue. It's an ethical issue. It's not just a philosophy. It's ethical, and it, it has to do with the question of uh, where where would you count the life as uh, is a is a life at, at happens at a conception when um, the the uh, sperm and the egg meets and it's combined and many Christians believe life begins there but some believe that's not life when that that has to come out of mother's womb into the world then we count that as a uh, whole human being so that's another kind of belief and this is not just political it's not the, about ideology but it is religion so ideology and religion usually in the general sense is deals with the two different uh, dom domain or areas but in reality in truth it, it's about the belief so ideology cannot stand alone so but the reason that I put the, the title religion as an ideology is this uh, ideology does not stop I mean the, the religion does not uh, stop in the ideology as these things like a strategies like as political statement vision statement and it market strategy uh, these these political and economic things are ideology but religion, the religion may override one's ideology so that's one thing religion as ideology so ideology becomes a part of religion and Sometimes it's good because it means integrated, but sometimes it's not good because you cannot have a, a, a separate or different ideology out of a religion. When religion is a religion uh, like a, a limited, and then the ideology has nothing to do with the religion. But there are sometimes religion may override one's ideology. That, this, this is not so dangerous, but that, that, that is uh, one of the uh, phenomena uh, that may happen, uh, religion as ideology. But when religion takes a uh, place of ideology, this might uh, send a signal, red signal. Religion can be adopted as an ideology. So there is no ideology but only religion. Again, next one. Religious ideology can be used to manipulate people. This is when the bad things happen. Because, like it says, religion loses its essence when it becomes ideology. So when religion replaces ideology, it does not stay as a religion. It, even if it says it's a religion, it's, it's an ideology because it has to deal with every political agenda. And the good religion, good religion, opens its, its doors to the 
freedom of choices in the political issues because as, as, as Christianity says God does not provide a, a certain political ideology it could be communism it could be uh, so socialism or it could be uh, democracy uh, we believe democracy is very close to the biblical teachings that's why we promote promote the uh, democracy as the uh, best known uh, political system that uh, uh, human generations have experienced but uh, there's something called uh, theocracy, uh, meaning the ruling of God, God's rule, the kingdom of God. That's the best, but it hasn't come yet. So, democracy might be the best known uh, uh, political system. But, Bible does not say democracy is the best, best political system. There is no verse saying that. Which means, uh, the, the biblical teachings opens the a diverse uh, idea about the political system. It can be the the king and and the kingdom system, like uh, England uh, still has. It could be democratic uh, system. No, Bible does not say that. But when religion becomes ideology, and there is no other ideology. Then you, you don't have choice of choosing a certain political system. Many Islam countries have this issue. Because Islamic State, Islamic State means uh, a nation that is ruled by Islamic religious ideology or belief. But belief is a belief, but to become an ideology, it, uh, it, work, it has to work with the, with the system, organization, and the power issues, and so on. And uh, one situation might be different from the others. And so in spite of uh, this different uh, uh, different level of uh, beliefs, religion now uh, becomes ideology and uh, it begins to manipulate its people because when when a person or whole community believes in a certain religion, they do not make a value judgment on their own. Especially some of those uh, hierarchic uh, religion or do dominating religion, then you, you as a person are not allowed to make any uh, personal decisions or limited personal decisions and the political system that does not allow its people to make a, 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 a maximum personal decision in other words uh, having the freedom of decision then it becomes a monarchy monarchy is a, a, a person or a certain idea ruling, uh, controlling, and manipulating one's personal individual decision. So when that happens, there is always the, the danger. Even if whole community, whole nation believe that certain relig religious belief is the truth, and 100% truth, and it is always right that but it, when, when, when and if that does violate the human right or human freedom or freedom of choice, then that 
people are being manipulated. Within a religious system, you decide to go into that uh, religion uh, knowing that your, your, your uh, freedom and your personal choices may be uh, limited because it is their belief. But when that becomes a national thing, a political thing, then there is a, uh, this uh, problem and issues. And then the thing is that then religion loses its essence as a religion when it becomes a, a, the a ruling ideology. But many nations or the cultures, ethnic groups in the past, uh, we've seen. And this all also happened with the Christianity. I'm not just talking about Islamic state or Islamic nations, but many Christians, Christian nations in uh, Middle East, Europe, they had the same issue. The religion becomes over the head of the, all the kings in Europe. The so Catholic Church rules over the kings and it it becomes a political power the mega political power and the only political power that rules over all the European countries and then its people so the religion became an ideology and then it loses its, its essence so we've seen that in uh, history Many times, many times, time after time, we, we, we've witnessed that. So that's a danger. Now, the religion as a set of ultimate answers. Ultimate answers. So there are the set of ultimate questions to begin with. Where am I going? What am I doing? What is the meaning of life? Uh, even though it's a small piece uh, question, uh, it's, it's a human question. It's any any uh, normal person with the thoughts and the personality or to ask this question. This is an ultimate, ultimate question. And uh, to sum up, the question is, why am I here? Where, where, why am I here? This, this question is why. What's the meaning of life? So again, do, do, you, do, do you have the answer to this question? And uh, meaning, do you have the ultimate answers? And people, even though they are busy doing uh, certain things, they're busy working and busy trying to survive, make ends meet, I mean, to feed uh, themselves. Still, there is this question always ringing. And most people just try tries to avoid it, ignore it, even though there is there. That doesn't mean that it's gone away. Always that question, well, why am I so busy? Why am I doing all these things, uh, sweat and effort and all these troubles? So there is that question, ultimate question of why and who am I? Who am I? And the religion, again, it provides the answers, answers or the answer. So another ultimate question may be, where do I come from and where, where am I going?
So they, these are the, some of the ultimate questions that you may address to yourself. Uh, some of some people say uh, this is not what I believe, but uh, I'm giving you ultimate answers can be received yet never given. The truth is, ultimate answers can be received and it is already given. The religion, the role of religion, is to give the ultimate answers to the ultimate questions. So that's the main and major function of any good religion. Whether it's uh, Islam, Buddhism, Christianity, or some folk, even the folk religions, uh, we are going to talk about what the folk religion is, but uh, uh, this micro, so-called micro religions, uh, still they they do uh, give answers to mm, not if, if it's not all but the most of these ultimate answers so it is given the problem is people are not asking uh, they they stop asking this ultimate question somewhere along uh, their existence so the reality reality brings these ultimate and questions and many are living without the answers and they they have their you know uh, kind of answers but they know they know that these are not really the answers but they try to fake it deceive themselves and say There is not much to the life or just enjoy your life. Well, they, they are not really the answers. They don't really believe it's the answers. But they fake it. But religion tries to give some serious answers to these ultimate questions. And the, now the question is, is, is it true? I mean, at the end, is, is these answers are true? So that will be another question, that another ultimate question to the ultimate answers. But initially, the ultimate question will be, who am I? Where am I from and where am I going? Why am I here? So these are the ultimate uh, questions and the religion provides uh, the, the answers and the final ultimate question will be is it true? How do I know these answers are the right answers? So that will be the, the ultimate uh, question to the, the ultimate answers. Religion as a comfort so, the life and reality, life again is the, the reality here. And then people try to find their comfort zone out of life or against life or beside life. So life goes on whether you like it or not. The reality is there and your existence continues as the time goes by. And there is a certain issue of survival. And then there is an issue of a meaning of life as, as we just looked at. And then that's, that's our opinion. Uh, but, you know, physically speaking, you have to live a life. And sometimes people think, I mean, not sometimes, people need some comfort zone that they can hide and be protected and be in peace 
out of all this busy and complicated and complex reality. Life is full of trouble. I don't need to explain, you know. Full of these trouble and issues and problems in life. I did not choose to have these problems, but it is there. And we have to handle those. And in, because of that, people want to have that comfort zone. That's human need. Because we are human, I mean, we need that. And the religion says, we'll provide you that comfort zone. Come here. Come, come join this religion. Come this, come here and uh, uh, join this doctrine. Believe in this doctrine and believe in uh, this God and that God, and you will be comforted. You will be in peace. So that's comfort zone. And I am sure that you know that what I am talking about. So there are people seeking comfort zone and the religion provides that. So religion as a comfort zone. So that comfort zone right outside it will be fear zone. And if you can just go through it beyond it, that learning and growth. So that's that's a, uh, the the the, the uh, human development. What does, what does religion does is to overcome that fear zone, which is by answering those ultimate questions. And also, there are some fear factors. Other than uh, your ultimate questions, it's about belief in you, yourself or your ability. It could be the money issues. Those are like a fear zone. And it's practical, usually practical, not, not something of that spiritual na nature or mental nature. But because of the reality, you have that fear zone. And the function or the role of religion as, as a uh, <coughs> comfort zone, it provides you to go beyond that by providing the comfort zone. And you can avoid the fear zone, not only avoid it, and you go through it to eventually learn and grow. So these are the positive functions of religion again, positive functions. Help you to go through or break the fear zone and go into learning and growth, which is a, uh, what the religion should do. If any religion is doing something other than this, then it, it is not a good religion. It is not a good religion. Uh, it might be just an ideology. And then someone up there, I mean, uh, who has more powerful than you, is using uh, religion to control so they can benefit and, and they can manipulate you. So that, that's negative. If you're not learning because of that, uh, your religion, if you're not growing because of your religion, then it is not a good religion. And some religion extend that fear zone. So you can just avoid to the comfort zone they provide. And when that happens, if a religion only limits you to the uh, very narrow comfort zone, then it is not a good one. So it's pretty similar, religion as a, a refugee. A comfort zone is where you, you stay in peace. But a refugee is a, you are coming or 
running away from the things and being protected. So it says a condition of being safe or sheltered from pursuit, danger, or trouble. So basically that assumes that you run away from pursuit, you run away from danger, and you run away from trouble. Or uh, something called a safe haven, which is a comfort zone. And that means you are being safe. Something providing shelter and protection. So, religion provides this function of shelter and protection from these negative elements of reality. Sometimes we do need that. We need to get away or run away from the dangers, pursuit, and trouble that is given by reality. Sometimes you cannot take it anymore. You say that. I can't take it anymore. And you need a refugee. A place that you can run away from and shelter yourself. So this might be, this is a picture of refugee. It's, it's a solid stone wall. Nothing can penetrate the place of refugee. It's like this. Religion as a privilege. A privilege is defined, defined as a special right, advantage, or immunity granted or available only to a particular person or group. Uh, this, this is a very negative uh, function of uh, religion. Whether you're Christian, Islam, or whatever, uh, it doesn't give you any privilege over over other people who does not have that religion. If you're a Christian and you you believe, you think you're more privileged than other people because you're a Christian, that's that's nonsense. That's wrong. God may provide you with something special. God may give you a certain provision, but that does not mean you are better than other person. There's always these, these people, because he or she is a Christian, because he or she is Islam, or because he is or she, she is something else, some, some, some kind of uh, person, religious person, that they believe they are better than others. No, religion does not give you any uh, privilege, like a advantage or, or certain rights or immunity. That's, that's not true. That's never, that never was the case of any good religion. But in history, as you look at it, and you don't have to go to the uh, history it happens today I mean and many many times it is daily thing that happens among the uh, believers of certain religion uh, sadly the religion as we call something called wasu w-a-s-p in uh, in America which you mean white Anglican and uh, Protestant, uh, Anglo-Saxon, AAS means Anglo-Saxon Protestant. They, they think they have something called a white uh, privilege. I, I mean, not all of them. They believe, uh, I should say, uh, some, some white people believed in this thing. They think it's God-given uh, privilege as a Christian as a protestant uh, to 
be better than people of colors, just black, Asians, or uh, or Pacific uh, people. So there is uh, this term white privilege. And they don't say a lot. I mean, today they do not say uh, a lot, except probably Ku Klux Klan or some some uh, white supremacist who believes white are better than others. That kind of forms a certain religion, eh? uh, and uh, sadly, most of those uh, white supremacists are uh, fundamental Christians. And their religion and their uh, supremacy in a certain uh, ethnic, racial uh, class is disintegrated. So some some religion, uh, I mean, religion can play a bad culture. It it cre can create bad culture. Or sometimes evil, even evil culture. So, see the look at the definition: unearned advantage based on race, which can be observed both systematically and individually. So it forms, it is, appears in the form of systematic uh, way. So. We we are aware of these things going on in America today, these racial issues, and the Black Lives Matter movement, and uh, it exactly has to do with this white privilege. And sadly enough, some has believed that it is God-given privilege, an earned advantage. See, look at this. There is certain privilege, economy, family, and uh, you, you don't see the rest of part, but it's a religion. So religion and family and economy, and then there's ethnicity, the race. So these, are these privileges? No, it cannot be. It's not, it's not what the Bible teaches. Uh, it's pretty similar to the uh, religion as uh, privilege uh, and uh, distinctiveness means the quality of being individual or easily distinguishable. So it can be neutral, it can be neutral, but it can be at that. When somebody is distinguished, or we say distinguished guest, meaning that distinguished guest is important. But distinguished does not usually, I mean, it's not associated with being important. But when you uh, put the value of importance to the uh, this distinctiveness or distinguished, and then we become wrong. So being a Christian doesn't mean that you're important, more important than other other person. For to, to God's eyes, whether you're a Christian or a non-Christian, he still he sees them the equally equally. He does not value Christian more more important that the, the who does not believe. Because uh, in fact, God values. The lost more. See, the Jesus told, told that the parable of the uh, shepherd who has gone out for one lost sheep, leaving ninety nine in in the cage or in the in the safe place. So the lost ones are as important as the uh, one who is already in the in the shelter. See. So the Bible does not teach you are more important because you are a Christian. 
or you are better than others privileged because you are Christian. So the privilege and distinctiveness uh, as, as uh, someone who is important uh, is wrong. So re religion as, as a distinctiveness is wrong. Standing out as being better due to a, a specific feature differentiation. See, this, if distinctiveness is defined in this way, this is not a usual de definition, but some sometimes distinctiveness is defined in this manner, standing up, being better, being more important due to specific feature. Religion does not grant you any of these. It doesn't. Especially the Christianity, if you're, if, even if you're Christian, that, that, that doesn't mean that you're uh, someone who's outstanding amongst non-believers. So, the red is only a color. That doesn't mean that you're, uh, you're better or more important or more beautiful. It does not mean uh, red is more beautiful than white. No, it doesn't, doesn't make sense. So, red color is just a color. Now, even though it's distinctive, outstanding, because all are uh, uh, white, but it can be reversed. All are red, and uh, there will be one white. And if you're with, with all red, then you're just the same as others. So, this, this uh, religion as distinctiveness or privilege as wrong okay religion as subsid subsidiaries uh, this is also it's not uh, right but many times this is what what is real a thing that is of lesser importance than but related to something else so you have your life you have your own values. You have your own uh, old views. And you have your own uh, personal belief system. And religion is under that. Whatever you believe, whether you're Islam, Christian, Buddhist, if your religion just comes under whatever is yours, it becomes an access accessory. A thing which can be added to something else in order to make it more useful, versatile, or attractive. So there is a something that is going to be major. And your religion becomes something of minor. Under. That is something major. Many times this is true. Religion is something of less value or something of less importance. You're, for you, money, your own ego, your personal fame, or your, your own, uh, the power, or something else is more important than your religion, then religion becomes a subsidiary. It becomes an accessory. It, it becomes something just a, a part of you. So you have some something real, real value, and the religion usually go against your real value. But you keep that religion because people you want to think of people that you are a Christian a good Christian and uh, indeed in fact uh, where you are not this this is something called hypocrisy hypocrisy and, or legalist and we've seen so many hypocrites hypocrites and legalists in our church I, I don't know about the other other religion but in a Christian church, this is what's happening. Religion, your Christian belief, it's not really true belief that you believe in 
but you just go to church and find a comfort zone and try to uh, you know compromise and and try to find a refuge only and say uh, God saved me because Jesus Christ who died on the cross it is true but you know the Christianity does not limit its belief to the salvation or, or your own salvation salvation is not the end of religion it's just the beginning of Christianity you just begin this is your first step and many are stopping there as a first step you find just refugee and comfort zone and that's it and it becomes the subsidiaries and I'm sure this is true for uh, Islam uh, Islamic community many Islams are just nominal they okay they, they practice five uh, prayers the, a day and then they do fast all these things they, they are required as a good Muslim Muslim but that does not mean that person is a true Muslim see they I mean it just becomes something of your your practice and then it, it's, it's not it's not a true religion religion as a lifestyle this, this is a good the way in which a person or a group lives that's a lifestyle so religion and reality and your existence when the reality exists and your belief when it integrates when it has certain integrity integrity then you are having true religion so religion is not just a practice it's not just a a, a way a, a part of your life it should be a lifestyle so it is important for which religion you are in again at the end it is the religion that I believe and, and I am a part of which uh, rule, rules my lifestyle is it true is it true and every religion claims that their religion is a true one and other religion is a fake or less than uh, my religion so but religion as a lifestyle means it controls and it dominates and it influences all the aspects of your life whether it's a food whether it's your money or whether it's your marriage whether it's your family and even your work should be dominated by your belief, your faith. And when that happens, there's no disintegration or there's no, no conflicts because of your belief. And uh, that's the proper way of being religious. So religion, it can be a good thing while religion can have a very negative effect to your life so it it, it is like a knife with the two sharp edges it can cut both ways right and uh, that's what the religion is and uh, religion as a lifestyle it deals with your health your work career friends time and family see all these things are included in your your uh, belief your faith and uh, then this means that your religion is integrated into your life so lifestyle again 
Each person choose product, service, and the activities that help define a unique lifestyle. So you know that the religion actually does not dominate your your lifestyle, but your lifestyle dominates uh, religion. See that works kind of uh, vice versa. So when you are making decision in uh, your life, like uh, how decision, work decision, career, friends, how you relate to them, how you, how you spend your time, and how how uh, your fa family dynamics are, these things. As you examine these things, we can tell if, if this person is religious or not. I mean, is this is this person is a truly uh, uh, a person of that uh, religion or not? And then lifestyle again, it's who we are, what we do, and it defines a pattern of consumption that reflects a person's choices of how to spend her or his time and money. See, lifestyle has to do with that time and money. That's a critical uh, measurement uh, to see who this person is. See, if your time and money is not spent in a way that your religion teaches or your religion believes, then you are not a true religious person. You are not a genuine to your religion. You are a hypocrite. Hypocrite meaning your belief and your uh, actual life is not the same. It does not agree. But unfortunately, many of us who are calling ourselves as certain with a certain religion, whether you're Muslim, you're Christian, you're a Buddhist. Your time and money is spent in, in a very different way than the teachings of your religion. So, we need to see how a certain person spend his or her time and money and that consumption, that's, that's a daily decision which reflects your lifestyle and your lifestyle reflects your belief about reality and your existence. So, this, this is very good, uh, the, the wisdom and perspective that I'm giving you to know a person. Don't look at what brand of uh, shirts uh, he or she is uh, wearing or what kind of shoes or what kind of uh, accessories they uh, have or what kind of uh, bag they carry the, the, or what they drive and where they live, the house. These things, you know, it doesn't tell. Don't look at it. but do make that interpretation and go beyond what you are seeing and their consumption, the way of spending money and time, it is who he or she believes in. So, I'm going to review what we did uh, on this class. Like uh, the religion, there are good aspects of religion, while religion as something else. And uh, religion 
is a belief system. It is a belief system. And it's your worldview. It includes philosophy. And then religion, it's also about your ideology. What you believe about economy and politics. They cannot be separated. But sometimes people with the power, the polit polit politicians, they use religion to manipulate the people. When that happens, it's not good. The religion is used. And uh, it can become someone's privilege. And it, it may distinguish someone that, that, you know, your religion does not give you any privilege or it does not distinguish you from any others. So do not confuse yourself. Do not lie to yourself. Do not fake yourself using the name of religion. It, it doesn't matter what religion you, you believe in, but just don't use your religion for your own advantage or your own goods or to, to, to gain your own benefits. That's a very wrong use of a religion. So not only we are just doing an academic uh, search or the study of religion, but we want to be a true, uh, really, truly religious person or genuine uh, person of religion. It doesn't matter whether you're Islam, you're Catholic, a Protestant, a Buddhist, or some any other religion. We need to be sincere about our religion because that is what the religion is about. So in the course of this study, we should be able to uh, discern, discern good religion from bad religion, and then good good believer and bad believer. So thank you. I'll stop here for today and I'll see you guys next week. Goodbye and have a, a beautiful and blessed day. Bye bye.